Here's some evidence of good news that we are turning the corner to an S-curve. The two pieces of evidence I present are the demographic transition, which predicts that let rates are likely to come down, and secondly, the fact that rates have in fact come down. So first, the demographic transition, which predicts that as incomes rise, population rates, growth rates will go down. So is it a transition between plenty and starvation? Is it a transition between a high rate of births and deaths to a low rate of births and deaths? Or is the demographic transition a transition from hunter-gatherer to an agrarian lifestyle? Well, the answer is it's a transition from high rates of births and deaths to low rates of births and deaths. <clears throat> now, this is the demographic transition. And there's a lot going on in it, but we'll go through it one step at a time. First, the x-axis represents stages of uh, time in general, from pre-industrial subsistence agriculture through production agriculture, where a surplus is produced, to industrial, where people have jobs in manufacturing, to post-industrial, where it's a service economy, as well as um, manufacturing. In the pre-industrial, across the top, you'll see growth rates. That's population growth rates. From very low growth rate, the population is basically in equilibrium with births equaling deaths, to a, a strongly increasing population, a very high rate of growth, then finally decreasing rate of growth. Now we're back to a low rate of growth, which we were in the beginning, and then finally zero growth rate, where births and deaths are in equilibrium. So here, starting out in the pre-industrial, where we have a subsistence farming, uh, death and disease are commonplace, and kids are your retirement plan. You have lots of children so that they can work on your farm, and uh, you also, the only retirement you have is that your children will take care of you, so you have a lot of them. Also, death is so common that you're not sure how many children will survive. You may have eight children, and you'll be lucky if any of them even survives. So you have to have several children for that insurance uh, plan. Then agricultural output increases. We're getting into the transitional stage now where there's some surplus from the farms. You don't need as many people to work the farm. Death rates fall. Food is plentiful more people are surviving, and we have better health care. As a result, you see that the birth rate, which is the green line, stays high, but the death rate falls off sharply. This mean that means that population is going to grow, because you have steady birth rates, but a very sharply falling death rate. <clears throat> then, okay, so now we're in the high growth rate, and then finally, uh, we move into the beginnings of the industrial phase where people can find jobs uh, working off the farm. Not everyone is needed on the farm. There's enough uh, people to produce agricultural surpluses for the cities so people can move in, get jobs, have uh, higher incomes, and with this, as incomes rise, women get paid jobs, more babies survive. And as people see that their children are going to survive, they don't have as many. People stop having so many kids. And finally, the birth rate falls until then, in the post-industrial uh, phase, people live a lot longer and fewer babies are born. There are low rates of deaths and low rates of birth. We're back into essentially zero growth. We could have been in zero growth rather than low growth here. This could have been zero growth and now we're back to zero growth, but at a much lower level of both births and deaths. That's the demographic transition. And it would be great if you could reproduce this in some manner on a test, if you could redraw this curve and know that um, this, the y-axis represents both births and deaths per thousand population. So uh, this blue rectangle shows where we are worldwide now. Even some of the poorest countries are moving to this phase where the death rate has already fallen and now the birth rates are falling. And in some countries, the birth rate is actually above the death rate.
Now the point of the whole demographic transition and why it's important to know about is that it really doesn't matter what your religion or your ideology is. You could be pro-population growth, you could be anti-population growth, it really doesn't even matter. Because the fact is that as births, that births fall as incomes rise, regardless of religion or ideology. Uh, births fall as incomes rise, wealth is a powerful contraceptive, and people seem to uh, want fewer kids and have uh, more money to spend on them. They want them to get an education. They want to have higher quality kids rather than just a uh, higher quantity. So has this really happened? As I mentioned before, let's go back one, if I can. Oh, um, so here's the rectangle. We're going to take a closer look at just this blue rectangle now in the next slide. In this blue rectangle, which is just a portion of the demographic transition, we see crude birth rate is declining, and crude death rate uh, has also declined. And finally, you actually get a few countries where the birth rate is actually lower than the death rate. They use different colors than mine. They have the death rate is green and the birth rate is red. So Africa, 38 uh, births and 14 deaths. Still, we have uh, births way outnumbering deaths, but they're gradually coming in as they move further toward industrialization. They move in this direction. They have higher and higher output on farms, and pretty soon they will are expected to end up much as North America, East Asia, and even Europe have uh, moved over to this end of the demographic transition, uh, where births and deaths will be in equilibrium again. How has this really happened? Well, in Sweden, it's been very carefully documented that this took about 204 years to move from 1800 to 2004 and to come from uh, a subsistence agricultural economy to a post-industrial one. N Mexico is moving rapidly through their demographic transition, and many other countries are too. They seem to be moving more quickly than, uh, than Western Europe did 200 years ago. Here's the Bangladesh miracle, which happened in 40 years' time. Uh, these are the, the total fertility rate, which is the number of children a woman has in her lifetime, on average. And so it fell from almost seven children per woman to just over three uh, children per woman in 40 years' time. And this is uh, due to three things, really. Agricultural output has to increase so that we don't need 10 people in a family all working the subsistence farm, which is what you needed before. Once we have some uh, surplus agricultural output, then people can move and get jobs off the farm. And women, even, can get jobs in textile in, and other industries in Bangladesh. And then another thing that's uh, credited with the Bangladesh miracle is uh, family planning education was so effective in Bangladesh to lower that growth rate. So it's still a very populous country, but it, it made a big difference. Family planning in general makes a big difference. And here are several neighbors, Iraq and Iran. Iraq did not have family planning. Iran did, and its uh, total fertility rate dramatically decreased. Uh, world over, women want fewer children. They want to spend more money on the on a few children rather than having a lot of children and not being able to provide things for them. They want their kids to get an education. They want them to have health care, and they know they can't do that if they don't have enough money per child. So Iraq and Iran show that family planning made a big difference there. Um, Pakistan and Bangladesh, again, Bangladesh fell uh, more rapidly than than Pakistan did. Uh, Malawi and Kenya being close neighbors, but having a very different outcome, where Malawi is still at six children compared to five for Kenya. And then Haiti and Dominican Republic. They share the same island. Uh, Haiti has four children per woman, and uh, Dominican Republic and Republic has about three. So family planning really does make a difference.